Hey guys, my name's Justin and welcome to Hellsboro, where we care about the design behind designer luxury. And if you do too, make sure to subscribe. Okay, so for today's video, I'm very excited to talk to you guys about everything I bought in... Oh, I should have been more prepared. Everything I bought in Stockholm. Woo! So basically, this is gonna be like a Mugler H&M haul, but then there's a few other things I wanted to talk about. And if you wanted to see something specific, just check out the chapter markers or the timestamps in the description or along like the video timeline or whatever. But I mean, just stick around for the whole time because we're gonna, you know, we're gonna have some fun. <laughs> so the first thing I wanted to talk about is this lovely leather jacket that I'm wearing. <laughs> so I got this at a store called Beyond Retro off of Drottningsgatan, which is basically just Queen Street, but it's like the shopping street in Stockholm. I think all the luxury stuff is like a little further away. I guess you would call it a high street? I don't know. Also, what does high street mean? I feel like that's something British people say. And I, <laughs> I just say it and don't exactly know what it means. But like if you walk pretty much like to the end of the street towards where there's like an observatory, like a park, you'll see Beyond Retro. It's a chain and it's more like a consignment store than like a like a thrift store or anything like that. So you won't find any like extremely amazing deals. Unless you're me. It's a shape that I love. It's like super cropped and it's that moto jacket kind of shape, but it's from Sears. And I'm like, oh my God, an American in Sweden buying something American from however many years, like 50 years ago or so. I don't know. I don't know how old it is, but it does feel really nice and it fits me perfectly. I find that I have like very <laughs> unusual proportions where I have wide shoulders, but then I'm very short. So then this is like a size medium and it fits me perfectly, it crops perfectly. It's almost like someone like had this tailor made for me. So it feels like it's meant to be. All of like the zippers are still in like really good working order. They're YKK, so of course they will be. I think they're like nickel cause they're tarnished, but they're still like that gray instead of like brassy. It did need a little bit of help, but the price on the tag was like, I don't know, like 80 bucks or something. And I managed to be like, hey, this jacket is so nice but like I see there's some things that need to get fixed, like this whole freaking lining. I need to take it to a specialist to like get it fixed. And then just to like recondition the leather and stuff like that. And this is me saying like, check out the vintage stores in Stockholm because they have some really interesting stuff. This is my first amazing purchase. So let's move on to the next thing. And if you're really excited for H&M Mugler, it's not this, <laughs> but I would almost say it's better. So I went to Stockholm to see the Queen Beyonce perform. I am extremely grateful to have witnessed it so early on so I didn't have to like go on a social media hiatus for like a month or whatever. Um, <laughs> because I have a lot of friends who are like, yeah, okay, I'm not gonna be on social media for the next month just because they don't want any spoilers. I'm like, I get it, like, cause it's worth it, honestly. And I'm not gonna talk about the actual concert, so don't worry about that. But I wanted to talk about the merch because I picked up three things. All right, the first thing I wanted to talk about is one of the tour shirts. So as you can see, it has like this like disco horse. You can see there's actually like little like squares on it to represent like the disco mirrors. And on the back in reflective, it says no skips. I don't know if the camera even is picking it up. You could tell me what does that look like? It looks like a little like sphere or something. And then it says Renaissance World Tour, RWT Renaissance World Tour on it. And it says no skips. And I think it's great. I just want to talk about the quality of this t-shirt. Like, yeah, it's just a t-shirt, but like it's that kind of worn in like cotton jersey. I think they must have done some treatments to it because like you can tell it was black and then they like washed it or something so much that it became this like pilly, like it looks like it's already worn in and it's so comfy and it's super thick. The stitching is what you would expect from like a mass produced kind of tour t-shirt. It's pretty good, but then there is a little bit of weirdness. But in general, like, so 600 crowns is like approximately 60 bucks. I would say this is a, a fair price for that because the print also feels like really nice quality. It's a little thick for my liking. I haven't washed this shirt yet. I also haven't worn it yet, but I haven't washed it. So we'll see if it like also softens after it gets washed. But there's something about this shirt that I just find like really funny. So I don't know. I love it. And then the next thing I got is actually a hoodie. So this one was, I think, 120 bucks, like 1200 kroner. And it says Renaissance World Tour, 10th of May to 27th of September. And yes, it's done in American dates. Sorry, <laughs> Europeans. 
And then it has the logo of the stage. I think this might also be like just the world tour logo because it has that kind of sphere look that the other thing had. I'm not sure though. So this, the way this hoodie fits is very like boxy. This is a size small and it still fits like a drop shoulder on me. And I, like I said, I have wide shoulders. And let me tell you, this is like the most comfortable like fleece back jersey that I've ever felt. You guys are gonna think I'm crazy, but it almost feels like cashmere or something. Like that's how soft it feels. It's a uh, cotton poly 80-20 blend, which means like, if you want to stay this soft, do not dryer it. I actually feel like the quality of this print is like nicer. Like it's covering, but not like as thick as the horse one. I don't know. Or maybe it's just like the nature of like the printing on this material. But I have to say like 120 is very steep, but like people have bought like Gildan hoodies with like lesser quality prints on it for like more than what this costs. I feel like this is also like some conspiracy theory nonsense with <laughs> simple on the back. And like, if you don't look too closely, you're like, what are these numbers? What are these words? <laughs> and then let me tell you about the thing that I was most excited about. So this is a shirt, it's not available anymore, but it says, I witnessed the Renaissance and it has a picture of, I'm assuming Beyonce, but it looks kind of funky in like a alien outer space kind of helmet with a chromed out body. It looks like it's the same manufacturer, but it's like a lighter weight. The pen on the back is what matters. Beyonce, Renaissance World Tour, Stockholm, Sweden, 10th of May, opening night. They do not have this kind of shirt anymore. This was just special for the opening night of the concert. Um. <laughs> It was super sold out by the time I got to the merch line. So this is an extra large, but like, I'll wear a shirt extra boxy, extra oversized, that's fine. And it looks cute, I'll just roll up the sleeves. But I was just like, I needed this shirt. I'm so extremely happy that I was able to get one. I would say all in all, this is like my happiest purchase just because this is such a limited kind of item, even though it's like not technically in my size, but I do think that the cut of it makes it easy to wear oversized. So I'm still extremely happy. All right, so now for the final part of all the stuff that I bought. So as you can see, I have two bags of extremely different sizes. That's because I made two different purchases because I wanted multiple bags. <laughs> and then I actually had to ask for this one extra because all they had at the cash register were these gigantic bags. And I was like, you know what, I'll take it. I'm going to look ridiculous, but I'll take it. And luckily I like took the train there. So I was able to like carry these bags on the train. I didn't have to like rip it up or anything like that. So I'm very happy. Okay, so for a little bit of context, May 11th is when the drop was supposed to happen. And I saw on the website, it's like 10 a.m. in stores, blah, blah, blah. And I figured out, okay, it's gotta be at the flagship in like the Stockholm city like center. I think I woke up at like seven or something like that. And I was like, okay, let's make our way to like the store. Cause we're staying a little ways away cause Beyonce was actually kind of like in the suburbs of Stockholm. So then I took the train in and then when I got there, the line was already like 20 people deep and I was like, okay, that's not so bad. By the time I woke up, took the train in, it was basically like eight o'clock, but then it was also nice because then I only, I waited for two hours, which is a decent amount of time, but also like, I really don't mind waiting lines. Like, especially cause like when it comes to like Sweden, they love like limited edition stuff. I actually have a friend who was in Sweden when like the Virgil Abloh collab with Ikea happened. She was like, we tried waiting in line. We got there two hours early and it was already like 200 people deep. And I'm like, that can't be serious. Like by the time they got in, there was like nothing left. So like Swedish people are serious when you talk about like these collabs. But then the experience was they handed out wristbands. So it was color coded so that People couldn't like skip in line or anything like that. I thought that was great. They let you in for 10 minutes at a time. I thought it was nice because 10 minutes is plenty of time to like do some shopping. Like when I went there, I had kind of took the most time out of anyone in my group. And I heard stories about people being like, oh, they only gave us 15 minutes to try things on, blah, blah. And I was like, that's not how it was <laughs> where we were. I like walked to like the farthest changing room in the world. And they're like, oh, how many items and blah, blah, blah. And then I probably took like 15 minutes anyways, cause I only had a few things that I want to try on. And some of the stuff did not even fit. And some of the stuff I did not even like touching in the end, but people had like piles of stuff and no one was like rushing or anything like that. So I think maybe the US just had some separate rules or something like that. But yeah, let's get into it. 
I think I'm gonna go from like accessories into clothing and then we'll like have some pit stops along the way. So in this first bag, you guys are gonna be like, Justin, why did you buy these? These are stupid. I have been very like hyper-focused on like this type of accessory for a little while. I don't know why. I guess because it's summer and I'm like, oh, I could wear this and I could be like very gay with it. So the first thing I got was a scarf. So this scarf is actually 100% silk. I just like the print. I like the star print that Mugler has been doing recently. And I loved just like folding it up, making a little neck wrap thingy and just wearing it. So there's that. Um, I have to say the quality of the stitching is actually decent. Some of the stitching is a little uneven, but like when you're like have it wrapped around your neck or where, however you want to wear it, like is anyone going to actually notice? And the people that do notice, like why? It feels nice quality, it's silk, it feels like a decent weave knit. I love it. And then this is like the color of like, like the Mugler, like that periwinkle kind of color. Actually, I think this is like my favorite <laughs> of the ones, so I don't know why I showed that to you first. So that scarf I think was like men's, this one is like women's. I have no idea why they're like gendering pieces of fabric. Again, it's a silk scarf. This one's bigger, so I have to kind of remedy how to actually wear it. This is not 2008, I'm not gonna like wear it like this <laughs> I did used to wear scarves like that in 2008 because I thought it was so cool. I was like a hipster and I was like, yeah, American Apparel, vintage scarves, ooh, so cool. Again, it's just the same print in black and white this time. I prefer the blue because the black and white just feels a little cheap to me just because of like the strong contrast and normally I like to see a little bit more of like a shifting in the colorway rather than such a strong contrast but I still do like it and I like that it is neutral and I'm a neutrals kind of person so I think I'll just figure out how to wear it and then just enjoy it actually one thing I was thinking of is like taking this to like a tailor and having them chop it up into smaller things I love silk and it still feels really nice but it's just it's a huge scarf okay now that we're done talking about that middle size scarf yes there's an even bigger one and this one i actually love but not for the reasons that i think you will expect so this is a flocked scarf where it's like sheer it's transparent you can see through it um it's gigantic like you could actually use this as a cover-up on the beach if you're like wearing a bikini or some small skimpy swimsuit and you just want a little bit of length to cover stuff up i think that would be such a cute thing to do with this <laughs> because it's like it's sheer, but then there's also like a little bit of that velvety, velour-y kind of feel, which I think is super fun. But what I want to do with this, and see it's making me like buy a table, but I want to get like a side table that's round, that's maybe like, I don't know, two and a half feet or something. So, like higher than a normal table, kind of pedestal-y, and then I want to put it on it. And then you can like see the table a little bit, but then it's sheer. And then you get the pattern. I just think that would be so great. Or if you have like a floor lamp, I don't have a floor lamp that you could do it with, with like a normal like lampshade and then put this on it. I think that'd be great too. But yeah, I mostly bought this to use it for like homeware, especially because I also didn't realize how big it was. And like similar to the other two scarves, the finishing is like pretty much the same. This one is done slightly differently because it is a different material. This is, yeah, it's like two thirds viscose, one third silk, but it does feel like good quality. Actually, I took a nap on the train home and I actually used this as a blanket. <laughs> I've been on social media now that I've like been to the Beyonce concert, but I've seen people kind of complaining about the quality of it. And I agree, a lot of the quality of some of the stuff didn't look great when I was like touching and feeling in the store. But I don't know, I'm like surprised with these scarves. The quality is like actually pretty decent. Oh, I forgot about this. So here's a little goodie that you also get. It's Angel Elixir. So it's a new fragrance from Mugler. And you can see it's like that same periwinkle. Apparently it was like special for this collaboration, but then I saw it in the mall when I crossed the street. So I don't know, but you know, you get free sample. <laughs> also known as like these collabs are basically just ads for the brand, so. Okay, and then the last accessory I got is actually this hat. But basically it's just a canvas hat. It has a little Mugler star and on the top it has like one of those, like a, oh, I'm not wearing a denim jacket for once, but it has like the denim button on the top to act as like a little button on there. And actually, I think this is like a bonded canvas or something like that because it feels like very structural and it feels kind of tall. And like, honestly, when I wear it, I want to like pull it down deeper, but like my ears won't let me. So like, it just kind of sits here and it's a little bit taller. 
but I do like it. It has a little bit of stretch in it. I have a huge head and this is the size large. So like, I still need to like wear it to like stretch out the elastic a little bit more, but like it fits and it fits me really snug and really nice. I think it looks better forward than backwards. I think backwards, I feel like a frat bro or something like that. Okay. <laughs> And I would say that the general quality of this hat is actually pretty good. It looks a little crazy right now because I had it folded up for like a whole day <laughs> in the bag. But like, I think if I like just took a steamer to it, I think it would be fine. I know like we've been seeing a lot of complaints, but I feel like most of those complaints of quality are probably about the clothing, which kind of makes sense. But this like, it feels thick. This is this hat is, is lined in a way because it is that bonded canvas with like the it's like a satiny or some sort of like scuba-ish kind of material on the inside to give it that structure. Maybe I'll find something out about this hat in like a few months and be like, oh my god, it just fell apart. But where I'm at right now, I'm still very happy with the quality of this along with the other stuff that I have so far. Okay, that was it for accessories. I want to move on to a very exciting category that I only got one thing from. <laughs> and that is jewelry. So as soon as I got in, I kind of made a beeline for the stuff that I knew didn't have sizes because I knew that stuff would go super fast and it did go very fast. There was two of these on the shelves and I managed to grab one of them. And like, I, I didn't realize it until later, but I was like very worried that like it was going to be too small. I know there's multiple versions of this necklace and there's like a smaller version, I think. After I bought it, I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I got one of these. And I was like, oh wait, it's gonna fit my fat neck. Because yes, my neck is thick. <laughs> That's how I introduce it. I actually like the way that they like secured it. But basically, it's like, it's a choker. I tried it on both ways. It does not work both ways. I tried this way going up and it does not work because it's so much heavier on top. You have to have it so that the points go up. The quality of it, you're paying a hundred bucks for like costume jewelry, brass. I've done it before, so I'm not ashamed of it because like, I just like some of like the novelty designs and I think it's fine to spend money on that kind of stuff. If you like really enjoy the design and I really like this design. It reminds me of, um, I think I mentioned it on the channel before, but Frank Gehry did a collaboration with Tiffany and it looks like the fish shape a bit. This is more teardroppy. There's a little like extra latch here. This part is not great. Um, it's a little loose, but the actual clasp that closes everything together is very secure. And it's kind of like one of those things where you push it in and it pops. And to release it, you have to push a thing. So I know like after a while, it probably won't be as secure, but I also don't imagine I'm gonna be wearing this like so often, you know? But I just love this piece. And I love that like, it actually fits my neck. <laughs> so that it's not too heavy. The backside of it is like carved out, which I do appreciate. Like I know some people are probably like, no, it needs to like feel heavy, whatever. I'm like, whatever, it's brass, like it's fine. You're gonna survive without it. To me, the fact that it's engineered in a way to make it so it's not like the heaviest thing you'll put on, I think is actually really smart. The points are rounded, which is really nice. So it doesn't like stab you in the neck when you're wearing it. And of course, because it's brass, like I don't know how it's gonna wear necessarily just because brass stuff does wear down when you wear it like as everyday jewelry. But then because this is not, at least for me, it's not gonna be like everyday jewelry, I think it'll be fine. So I'm not too worried about that. All right, so we're on to our last two items. I initially wanted four things, like four like articles of clothing from this drop. One of them I didn't get because I thought it had already sold out. Joke's on me. I went on the website afterwards and I saw that the actual description and like looked at the close-up pictures of the item. And I was like, oh, I definitely had that in my hand. And I was like, no, it's not for me. I thought it was like a flocked, like similar to that scarf, like the turtleneck, but the super tight one, but then it ends up, those were like rhinestones on it. And I absolutely had that in my hands. And I was like, oh, that's fun, not for me, literally. So there's one thing that immediately fell off my wish list without me even realizing it. And I was sad a little, cause I was like, oh, it sold out. There's another thing too. I wanted the corset tank top, and I managed to grab one and I was just like, whatever, the size seems fine. I, A, could not even get it on because of how small it was. I think I ended up grabbing a woman's one instead of a men's. So the sizing did not work for me. But also the material was disgusting. <laughs> I didn't like it. It felt like that scuba material that they made dresses out of in like the late aughts. Very like bodycon. There's no hint of any organic material. It was literally just plastic, you know? I wasn't heartbroken about not being able to get it. Um, also the fact that the zipper, maybe I just don't know how to put on corsets, 
but like the zipper came from the bottom. I was like, how are you supposed to put your shoulder in there? I'm like, do I have to dislocate it? So I just kind of gave up and I was like, whatever. If I can't figure it out, it's not like a big deal for me. But then the other thing that I wanted that I actually wish I had gotten was the corset hoodie. Even though I was like, I don't know, 20 something in line, it had already sold out at that point, which to me means that they had like one or two of each size of that item. So I'm like, okay, it wasn't meant to be. I was not gonna wait for three, four hours in the morning just to get like a hundred dollar hoodie. That being said, I went on the Mooglare website. Um, the actual piece looks, A, it looks very different, but it's like $900. But I also do like the silhouette and the structure of that a lot better. It really plays up the boxiness of the shoulders down into like a corset. So like you really get that triangle shape. While this one felt a little bit more rectangular and it felt kind of like straight and just kind of generally oversized. Like you're wearing just a regular oversized hoodie with a corset over it, which is fine. And I do think I still would have liked it. Those are the things I missed out on. I did manage to get two things. One of them I'm in love with and one of them I'm just happy that I could get. Okay, so the first thing that I like, I already know that I'm gonna like a lot, but I just have to figure out where to put it in my wardrobe is I got one of these like flocked t-shirt. It came with a hanger and this is not one of those like plastic ones, like the Moschino one. Like, I mean, it is plastic, but like it's heavy duty. So I, lo I love this hanger. But then I love this because it's sheer, but then it's not in like the same body tight kind of silhouette that Mugler does. This is more of like a typical kind of cut for a shirt. Looking at the quality, honestly, like the stitching's uneven. The material is like, well, you know, it is what it is. Like it feels like fine. I also am glad that there's no logos. It's just like a really fun print, like this distorted star. For me, I'm not so obsessed with like making sure this is a high quality piece because I know it's not going to be. It's like, it, it, it does come from like a fast fashion place. But in general, I do like this shirt. I do want to mention one thing and it's the neckline. The neckline, like the ribbing on the collar, it feels very thin. So and it feels thin. like something that will wear down if you like abuse it. I mean, I also never dryer my stuff when I like want to take care of it, but it just means that you can't do that. Okay, but then the thing that I was the most excited for and like, I think this is probably like this number two item on my wish list. In general, I've been looking for jeans. <laughs> so the fact that I was able to get a pair of jeans is really nice. And I managed to get the straight leg spiral jeans. This one is very different from some of the other ones where like, I think the material's meant to be a little bit more stretchy, more scuba. This is just kind of like a thick nylon. But that's kind of like the nice thing, right? Like it's a thick nylon. The jeans, like the actual denim material, obviously it's fast fashion. It's thin, it's so thin. Really thin. But there's almost like the novelty aspect to these jeans that helps me justify that cost as well. Because I'm not gonna buy like $500, $700 jeans, however much they cost. That's just crazy. 150 is doable. And if I can like get some wear out of them and take care of them in general, don't dryer them, get them repaired when there's any rips or something like that, I will. Because that's just how I am. The way these look on me, I was like, oh yeah, this is good. And like one thing that I appreciate is that the spiral kind of stops a little bit higher up. So like, even though I'm probably gonna have to take off this much of the jeans or some, something somewhere around here this much, I'm not losing too much of that spiral effect, which I think is, I appreciate it, I don't know. Maybe if you're taller, you would have wanted to be a little bit more crazy all the way down, but whatever. I will say like the construction of these jeans is like, <laughs> I don't know if I would call it really good, but it's really interesting. Like you can see like where the seams run down like, it's actually like a constructed garment. I think maybe where they cut the cost is just the material. And that's where like they made that money back, you know? Because this does seem like a very complicated thing to sew and that there would be a decent amount of waste from it. And I think that's probably what has to do with some of the pricing as well as just like they want to make money, you know? I don't know, I'm just excited. I, I've been looking for jeans and I like the Mugler jeans, but they're way too expensive for me to justify purchasing them. Because they're jeans and I wear through them because my thighs. Um, I will say maybe the zipper could be better. I don't know if it's YKK. And it's not. This is something called SAB or BBS or something like that. But like, you know, if it does break, I'll just take it to a tailor and they'll just switch it out for like a YKK zipper. All right, so that is everything that I picked up from Stockholm, from my H&M Mugler haul, a little bit of Beyonce merch, and then a little bit of a vintage shopping victory. That's what I'm going to call it. But yeah, I can't wait to get some of these things altered so I can like fully wear them. Let me know what you guys think. If you think I just wasted my money, which I mean, in truth, like I nobody really needs 
this much stuff, so I know I did. But let me know what you think, if you like, like any of this stuff from the collab, or if you got anything. I would love to hear from someone who's like, oh my gosh, I got the corset hoodie, and it's terrible, good, bad, hmm? <laughs> Maybe you could just lie to me and tell me it's bad so I feel better about myself. That would be really nice. <laughs> But that is all I have for you today. So if you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. It lets me know that you like this kind of content and that you do care about the design behind Designer Luxury. Until next time. Until next time. But this, like, it feels thick.